Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today, uh, we got to take a look at probably the worst car I've ever bought for Borough Motors. Uh, it's just outside the office, uh, it hasn't been with us for quite a while, it's been somewhere else. It's finally come back to me, I finally got the option of doing something with it, but what I'm going to do, I don't really know, but whatever it is, it's got to be the quickest route to get it out of my life as possible. This is the key. It needs to get washed, but I want to show you before we do. So let's head outside and we'll see what we're dealing with. Right. Here it is. It is this. Do you know what? Actually, a lot of you will recognize this. A Fiat 500X that was in episode, I looked it up just the other day. I think it was episode 33, in the 30s anyway, where the title was something like, as soon as we sold it, it just never started again. Do you remember this Fiat 500X? Basically, We've had a right old saga with this car, to be honest. I can't remember where it came from. I think it might have been a BCA car. It used to look nicer than this. It didn't have quite as much grime and whatever on it. There's quite a history with this car, actually. So I'll try and give you the, the short version of this story. We bought it. It was fine, but just wasn't very popular. And I remember what happened. When I bought it, it was from BCA. I remember now, BCA Bristol and I hadn't really paid much attention to the online auction listing and I think it said something to do with problem starting or battery or something along those lines and I thought oh you know I don't know what that is but we'll have to find out when we got there and it all started fine uh, no weird noises in it like that it seemed perfectly fine so we you know just assumed it was a weird one of those anomalies that happens on one of these AARAC assured reports it sat around for a while. No one seemed that interested in it, unfortunately. But eventually we did sell it. The customers took it away. They absolutely loved it. This, at the time, we had two. We had this one and a grey one. The other one was a 17 plate. And this, they preferred this one because it was white and it was just what they wanted. And they took it away. And not long after, they phoned us to say it wouldn't start and they were having problems with it. And we spent a bit of time trying to figure out what it was. And we were just having an absolute nightmare with it. Electrical gremlins very typically Italian. What we did in the end, because they loved the car and you know they didn't really know what else to do, we swapped them into the other one, which was an upgrade of probably about a thousand pounds. But we made it work for them because you know it felt bad they bought this car and not long after it had gone wrong. So from that point, we sent it to the main dealer where they put in a new body control module. It had some kind of issue with it and they replaced it with a new one at about the cost of about 750 quid, I think which was a lot of money, but we thought, you know, if that solves it, then that's great, that's fine. Getting a bit annoyed with this car by that point, but we had a go at retailing it again and sold it again. And that's where you will have seen in the previous weekly video, we sold it to the customer, we got it all prepped, we'd MOT'd it, we cleaned it, we'd done all the bits and pieces we need to. We literally took the money off the customer, signed all the paperwork, handed them the keys, they went out to go and drive off the forecourt and it just wouldn't start and it never started again. We couldn't do anything with it. We couldn't get the start, if new battery, plugging it in, all that sort of stuff. So back to the main dealer it went. It's been there for seven months since that video was made basically and we've been chasing up and chasing up and chasing up and they've had staffing issues and the likes and it's now back. So theoretically after another 400, 500 pounds it should fire up no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop in it, cross my fingers, see if it will start. If it will I'm just going to pull it around here so we can have a better look at it. And I'll tell you exactly what they did this time around. Why couldn't it do that before? Right, let's turn the music off. It's a shame really, because this is quite a nice car. It's only on 57,000 miles. There we are. I haven't even seen the front of this because it's been parked there since before the weekend. And yeah, I've driven past it a few times, seen it outside of the main dealer. I think they had, yeah, as I said, they had some sh staff shortages certainly in the valeting department as you thought you know considering we spent over a thousand pounds of them in recent days on this same car they might have just washed the mildew and stuff off but they haven't so what have they done i'm gonna hop back inside sit down comfortable and tell you exactly all the work they've done fiat themselves faced much the same problem as we had as i don't think they could communicate with it they plugged in their machine and they couldn't figure it out so much like we had to they, well, first off, they asked us if we had an auto electrician that we might want to use. And we thought, well, we brought it to Fiat because it's a Fiat. And we thought, you could figure it out. So the guys did ask me, would we want someone to look at it? And I said, let them find someone because, you know, they've changed the BCM. I want them to follow through with it and 
get it back working again. So they did get an auto electrician in. He traced down all the wiring and all that sort of stuff, supposedly. Actually, what he did was unplug the ECU and plug it back in and it fired up. Um, once he had done that, he plugged it in and couldn't find any faults. So he said, yeah, it's fixed. I wouldn't guarantee it won't happen again, but, you know, it's fixed. That's £400, please. He's done nothing, really. He's unplugged something, plugged it back. He's literally done the old, I maybe try turning it off and on again. Hasn't fixed anything. Can't tell me what the problem is. Obviously, I can't trust this car. I could never sell it retail again. It may be fine. It may be that it had loose connection on the clamps for the ECU or something, but I couldn't be less interested in this car. I dread to think how much money I've lost after having spent, you know, a thousand pounds on it at main dealer, the prep in the first place, the fact that I've owned it for a year. I expect this is a birthday car, sort of in the trade we call the car that we've had for at least a year and it's had a birthday with us. And it is a shame because it is quite a nice car, really. Um, everything's nice in here. It's got the sat nav and all that sort of stuff, but I just couldn't trust it. And if we sold it to a customer again, retail or anyone, even if I wanted to try and trade it on and it had this problem again, I would just have a mental breakdown because some cars are just sent to torture you, I think. So I will be losing money in the thousands, I'd say, at least 3,000. I think I will probably be out of pocket on this car, but take the rough of the smooth. The sooner I get it out of my life, the sooner it can stop costing me money because if I hang on to it and try and make my money back somehow by retailing it, it will just cost me more money. And that is a good lesson in the car trade, I think. So my plan is I will let the lads valet this. I might even valet myself. It might be quite cathartic to actually clean it myself and see it go for the last time. Um, at least to be able to fix the dirtiness issue of it myself. Do you know what I don't know though is, if for all I know, it could have run out of MOT now. It's been at the MOT, uh, it's been at the main dealer for so long. I'm gonna do a quick vehicle score on it. Let's see what it scores as well. If it doesn't come up with number 666 out of 999, I will be amazed. Our registration is Sierra Echo 15 Oscar Julia Alpha. It's going to check the car and give us a score. It's 850, which is 165 above average. Amazing. It doesn't know what I know. It's a very clever app, but it doesn't know as much as I know. It doesn't know what a hateful machine is. Is it ULES compliant? I bet it is. Yes, it is. MOT history. 100% uh, pass rate. MOT due the 23rd of... Uh, of the 23rd of August 2024 was actually out of MOT, which is upsetting. It seems like they've changed the format of the old vehicle score slightly. It's interesting. Oh, it might be under vehicle details. Yeah, no, no MOT. That's upsetting. So I'm going to have to MOT it before we send it to auction, which is my plan, by the way. I'm going to send it to auction and just get it out of my life. Uh, I will lose money. Do you see the squirrel? Did you catch the squirrel? That was very nice. But yeah, I think we'll need to MOT it first and pray, pray to God that it doesn't just like stop working again in the meantime while it's at the MOT station or something. Much like the Mercedes that Jason had that went to MOT when we'd sold it and that just stopped starting as well. Honestly, this job makes you hate cars. Just, just why? Why? Yeah, so we're gonna clean it up. We'll get it MOT'd. I'll have to have a look in the diary in a minute and see how soon we can MOT it and just get it out of my life. You know, on paper, there's nothing wrong with it now. It's a lovely car, lovely family car, but you know, I don't trust it anymore. So someone else can trust it. Anyway, back to vehicle score. If you were gonna buy this, I wouldn't recommend buying this one, but if you were looking for a Fiat 500X or any other car, then I highly recommend you do one of their vehicle checks. Uh, it covers everything, whether this car's got financed against it, whether it's been written off, it would check the mileage and loads and loads of other things. It's just peace of mind, isn't it? It would give you some confidence in buying the car, the kind of confidence that I've lost in this car. Don't forget to use my code shifting amount of 20, you'll get 20% off. And yeah, it will save you a massive headache like I've had with this, hopefully. So yeah, there we have it. Uh, a bit of a different video and a very quick one and a very simple one, but I just thought I'd share with you some of the joys of dealing with used cars. It's probably the same with new cars, to be honest. Cars, <laughs> hate them. Um, but let me know in the comments, maybe you're someone who's worked on a lot of these. I'm sure they're not known for their electrical greatness. To be fair, even if someone in the comments tells me that they know exactly what it is and how to fix it, I still wouldn't trust it. But maybe if you're quick and you want to buy this because you're a very insane person, then drop me a message, leave me a comment, uh, or email us at info at It's probably the wrong email, isn't it? But that'll do. Because this video probably got the day after. 
and I still need to MOT it, clean it, all that sort of stuff. I can probably clean up my tears. Just, just the tears coming out of me is enough to... Anyway, enough whinging. That is it. It's not the end of the world. We'll make it back on plenty of the cars. In fact, I'm very glad to have it back from the main agent where it's been for seven months because it's incredibly frustrating. That is my money sat there. It probably owes me £5,000 or something. Just, can you imagine someone takes 5000 and they're like, yeah, we'll get, get around to that at some point. It's bad enough when you've got one car. When you've got 50, terrible. Anyway, that is it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments as always. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like it to, you know, make me feel slightly better. Don't forget to subscribe because we are very close to hitting 100,000 subscribers. And when we do, I'm giving away a 4,000 pound. I'm giving, no, I'm giving away a Fiat 500X. That's what I'm gonna do. You're not gonna get a Tudor watch. You can have a Fiat 500X that starts sometimes. Just kidding. We're giving away that very nice watch. And don't forget, if you do want a, a very nice family car, then we are still raffling our Porsche Cayenne for just two pounds. There's a deal on that as well. Buy 10 tickets, you will get five for free. And you can use the code TOBY10 and get an extra 10% off. That is it. Onwards and upwards. I'll be glad to see this out of my life. If you want to buy it, call me. 1-800-MUG. That is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>